Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Why is it when you need a miracle, it doesn't happen, but when you least expect it, it happens? You are married. You have challenges in your relationship, but your spouse is unwilling to accede to any counseling. Is divorce an option? I'm no How does a parent handle a promiscuous child? A what are considered the do's and don'ts of a born-again so couple who is not yet married? There are always more questions than answers. That so here is Apostle Gemma. A very good afternoon to you. Welcome to Ask Pastor Gemma. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with me this afternoon. Um... We live in troublous times. The Bible call it perilous times. And uh, I'm just here to tell you that there is a hiding place. There's a place that we all can go. And that place is in God. So my intention is to encourage you. I don't want you to despair. I don't want you to believe that everything is hopeless. There is hope. But our hope is in God. Uh, he may be unseen. But he is very relevant and very active in the affairs of men. Uh, let me start by giving God praise for being here. My name is Gemma Duncan. I'm married to Apostle Vivian Duncan, and together we pastor Divine Destiny Worship Center, which is located on the Digo Martin Main Road, opposite Sadonics Drive in Trinidad and Tobago. We have branches in Sangre Grande. We have a branch in Faisabad, one in Rio Claro, one in Chaguanas. We have a branch in Tobago and one in the island of Antigua. This morning, I want to really give God thanks for being alive. And if you are viewing me, since you're viewing me, you too can give him thanks for being alive. Life is something that we must celebrate. We've always had the opportunity to celebrate it. But today, in this time, in this season, it seems as though people are dying around us in ways that are unprecedented. We've never had such experiences. People are being uh, sick. People are dying. Um, you know, people always died eh? because um, birthing, being born and dying are natural things. But the numbers, and the manner, very different today, very unprecedented. So I give God praise for being here and being alive. I thank him for providing for us as a family, as well as protecting us. I give God praise for Vivian, my husband. I really thank God that I was privileged, or I'm still privileged to be walking alongside Vivian in this pathway that God has led us both. I thank God for family, our children and today I just want to say how much I appreciate and love them Donald and Angel, Dion and Leah, Darian and Daniel and our daughter Patrice. I thank God for Divine Destiny Worship Center and I want to send my love to you as well and the members of the kingdom of God. I want you to be encouraged, stick with God, stay with God and everybody else who is viewing, God bless you. Before I get into the question, which is, how could someone who has everything feel so depressed and despondent? Very important question, very interesting question, very relevant question. Simply because every single one of us, when I get into the meat of what I'm going to share, um, want all those things that um, people have. You know, when you see that that person has everything and is somebody who we, we, we will describe as a successful individual, we all, I mean, feel a little jealous, feel a little envious. I mean, if we, if we really want to admit it, and in a way, I kind of wish that you were in that person's position. Um, and yet to find out, as the question says, 
how could someone who has everything feel so depressed and despondent? Before we get into the very meat of the question, let me give you the notices for um, this week. As Pastor Gemma Radio, which is on Isaac 98.1, every Friday afternoon has been shifted to 2 p.m. instead of 3 p.m. Now, please, if you know anybody who listens to the program, just get the word, spread the word out there that the time has shifted to 2 p.m. It's about 10 plus years. We've been at that same time, sort of 3 o'clock, so people are accustomed to that time. So please help me by sharing this information. The Divine Destiny Worship Center services are still online, as you well know, um, Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Thursdays 7 p.m., Friday 7 p.m., and Sunday at 9 a.m. So from Wednesday to Friday, 7 p.m., and on Sundays 9 a.m. Apostle Vivian is preaching on the principles and practice of self-governance, and it's something that is absolutely necessary and very relevant for the season that we're in. It's a manual available. You can call 633 The manual is of the same name, and uh, they will advise you. Or you can get it online by visiting shop.ddwc.church. Shop.ddwc.church. New office hours. For now, we have to shift it again, make some changes. The administrative offices are from 10 a.m., to 3 p.m. Monday to Friday, or Business Center, Exousia, Book and Gift Center, TT Post and Copy Center will be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday to Friday as well. Our latest ministry offering from the Vivian Duncan family is a ministry called the PK Connection. It's a ministry dedicated to children of pastors and church leaders, and is the baby of our daughter, Jade Patrice Duncan, you can check the website and you'll get all of the details necessary. And the website is thepkconnection.com. Thepkconnection.com. So we're going back to the question, how could someone who has everything feel so depressed and despondent? We have to kind of analyze the question before we can understand it. Because I want us to all be on the same page as to what that question really entails. My interpretation of the question is, Everything, and which is the pivotal word, what do we mean by everything? And usually, there are a few things that we, when we say everything, somebody has everything, these are what we are referring to. So that person has wealth, and that person has success. We would say that person is a successful individual. That person has good family life. That person has good social standing, and that person has good health, right? And we're going to analyze each one to see what does the Bible say about these things. Because something is wrong if I have everything and I'm putting everything in inverted commas and I'm still depressed and despondent because many successful people, many people who have all the things we just mentioned, wealth, success, family life, good social standing, good health, commit suicide. There's a high suicide rate in people who um, the society deem as successful or people who have everything and we view them and, uh, you know, we wish we could be in their positions. Um, uh, we see them on the television, uh, on the radio, we hear them, especially in social media. I mean, people follow them. They have millions of followers on social media and uh, these followers wish they could be like them. We buy all their products and, and try to even look like them. Some people... Uh, change your hair, change your face, change your makeup, the clothing that their name is on, we want to have them and so on. So let's hear what the Bible says about these things. Remember, when we say that somebody has everything, we mean that they have wealth, they have success, they have family life, good social standing and good health, among other things. But these are the main things. Now, I want to start off by saying that every single one of these things is good in itself. Every one is good in itself. So there is nothing wrong with having those things. All of us um, would wish to have those things. The issue is, the problem is, how could it be possible that somebody would have all of these things and still be depressed and despondent? 
the Bible actually speaks of these things as actually coming from God himself. So then, I mean, that becomes a little more confusing. And we're going to look at some scriptures that will help us. Let's begin with wealth. So the question is, how could someone who has everything feel so depressed and despondent? And wealth is part of that package of the everything. So what does the Bible say about wealth? In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, it reads, but you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who is giving you power to make wealth, that he may confirm his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Wow. So here in Deuteronomy, God is speaking to his people and is reminding them these are the Israelites at that time. And uh, they have now been liberated let loose from bondage in Egypt and they are going to what is known as the promised land because God had covenanted with Abraham that his people are going to be in bondage but they will come out and go into the special land that God had picked for them and chosen for them and, and so on as an inheritance. And God is cautioning Moses uh, and you know, saying to him as a leader, I want you to remind these people um, that when they get in and they get all that I promised them, that it is I who gave them the power or the anointing or the empowerment or the skills base to get wealth. So based on this verse alone, it seems as nothing is wrong with wealth in itself, but it something seems wrong if when we acquire wealth, by whatever means, except, um, you know, it has to be moral, it has to be legal, <laughs> you know, uh, we may not have to work for it because some people inherit it, but we must still remember it is God who initially gave the power to acquire that wealth. Uh, some maybe may come from a generation of wealthy people, but it is God still. You didn't work. Maybe the generation before you didn't really have to work to acquire it, but somebody down the line had to work. God had to enable them. God had to give them the business idea. God had to give them success in business or whatever venture it was that actually brought um, wealth to the family. Uh, now, this is uh, something that we're going to deal with um, at the end of this little discourse. Because God gave King Solomon, Solomon was King David's son, both wisdom and wealth. So it seems good to have both wisdom and wealth. When we look at Solomon's life, we realize that he was not always wise. He didn't utilize the wisdom that God gave him. So there are times that God would bless us, and we call that's what we say in the church, that you're blessed. But if I keep forget where the blessing came from, and if I don't understand that um, the blessing has a level of responsibility to it. My husband always says that prosperity comes with responsibility. And he likes to say, if God can get it through me, he can get it or he will get it to me. So it means that when God puts me in this advantageous position of acquisition of wealth at the right way, not illegal, not immoral, then I have the responsibility of helping other people. Right, that's one of the main reasons why God would allow us to get wealth. Um, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't, you should not enjoy the wealth. Oh, yeah, part of that is enjoyment. Yes, He wants you to enjoy it as well as, but share as well. And we're going to go into a little more detail later on. Let's talk about again what does the Bible say about wealth? It says in Proverbs thirteen eleven, dishonest money dwindles away. But whoever gathers money little by little will make it grow. The Bible is very clear. If you can get very wealthy or I can get very wealthy by dishonest means, and there are people who have acquired wealth in that way, but he says, listen to me, it will dwindle away. And there are times when the generations didn't seem to be able to hold on to the wealth that was acquired by their forefathers simply because it was a dishonest gain. So we have to be careful how we acquire in wealth. It says the correct way to acquire wealth, except you inherited it. If you inherited it, that's what it is. But if you're starting off on a, a different level, 
God wants to bless us. He wants us to acquire wealth, but it must be little by little. And the hard work must be an integral part of this whole thing. My eldest son, Donnell, likes to say, you have to work hard, but you have to work smart as well. So hard work, working smart, not necessarily hard alone, uh, making correct investments. And we'll come to that later on because investments could be in investments naturally. It could also mean investments in the kingdom of God. Um, Proverbs 11, 25 or 24 to 25, I'm taking my time to look at the Bible. What does the Bible say? Because these are very um, kind of sticky topics and sticky areas to discuss, especially when it comes to church. People have a problem with, with wealth, to the ch- uh, you know, with people in church or church people having wealth. Everybody else is okay for everybody else in the society to acquire wealth except somebody who, and, and they put the inverted commas, church people. But Proverbs 11, 24 to 25 says, one person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. Let me read that again. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. So it seems as though it's okay to have wealth, as I said before. But if you hold on to it, then poverty will come to you based on the scripture. Proverbs 3, 9 again says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. You know what does it mean to honor the Lord? In Matthew 6, verses 19 to 20, Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Jesus talked a lot about money, amazingly. If you read the Bible, read the Gospels as the first uh, four books in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, 11 out of the 39 parables were about finances. And yet people are offended when we talk about money in church. Matthew 6, 19, 20 ends with Jesus talking there. It says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Most people who enjoy sustained financial success are always generous. They exercise balance in the utilization of their finances. They spend some, enjoy some for themselves. They save some, and they invest in a system that cannot fail. And that's what Jesus was talking about. Um, A system where we invest in what God called the kingdom of God. We invest in people. The Bible says if you give to the poor, you lend to God. And the scripture is full of God admonishing us that when he blesses us, that we must help those who are in need. Um, The kingdom of God, uh, when you talk about financing it, that's another ticklish situation. Um, It's about investing our monies to to send out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, it it costs. Some people have a problem with the church having money, but then uh, we have to, I'm talking to you now, we have to pay the TV station. As Pastor Gemma Radio, 98.1, although it's a so-called Christian radio station, we still have to pay them. When I say so cool, I'm not trying to diminish what it is, right? Um, but you have to pay them. We can't because the station can't run on um, charity, as we see, right? So we have to fund the spread of the gospel, and it involves many things, right? Now, remember Jesus taught repentance. He taught love. He taught acceptance. He taught forgiveness, among other things. But he also taught about money. Uh, we have to stop here. The time flies. But remember, we're dealing with the question, how could someone who has everything feel so depressed and despondent? And I'm saying to you that God and the Bible is for wealth. And when we talk about somebody who has everything, it is inclusive of wealth. God is for wealth. He's not against wealth. And I give you a number of scriptures to prove that. The problem is, what do you do with the wealth? And God will bless us. The wealth will be sustained if we use the wealth to make the lives of other people better. If we use the wealth to uh, sponsor and fund the the preaching of the gospel, um, of course, some of it will be used for us to have a very good quality of life. God is not against us living well, living comfortably, enjoying um, a good life, as people say. Um, I hope I helped you a little bit with this. we are, I'm going to continue next time we meet. So please join me again Thursday, next Thursday. At the same time, 12.15, our same station, where we continue to answer this question, how is it possible to have everything 
and yet be depressed and despondent. Um, it means what do you do with the everything you have and where God is placed in your life. He has to be top. He has to be first. He has to be priority in our lives. And we have to utilize the wealth that he gives us to help humanity, to make the lives of other people better. And that is when we can sustain generational wealth. Lift up our eyes to the maker of heaven. He is our Have you ever said to yourself, I really wish I can understand the Bible better? I read the Bible, but I simply do not understand it. I wish I knew enough to share my faith. Sometimes I sit in the pew and I don't quite understand because the pastor uses so many scriptures. If you said any of these things, today I have the answer and the solution to your problem. My name is Gemma Duncan. My husband and I are the pastors of Divine Destiny Worship Center with our headquarters in Digo Martin. And we have a program called the School of the Bible that I would like to introduce to you today. School of the Bible is a one-year program for simple, regular, ordinary people who sit in the pews, whose only desire is to understand the Bible better. Since 2014, we've catered for a wide range of persons as young as 10 years old and the people into their 80s. So it's something that the average person can really understand and grasp. Although we cater primarily for people in the pews, we've had a few pastors who came and they felt that they should just sharpen up their, their information base on the Word of God. Since 2014, we've helped almost 400 persons, ranging from young to way into the 80s. The program lasts for a year. Every Tuesday from 7 to 9, we meet. And for four Saturdays for the entire year, every quarter, we have what we call a quarterly assessment meeting. We also have online facilities, and we've been really blessed. We have had people from USA, Canada, Europe, the Caribbean countries, Tobago, and we actually have what we call a local online group or groups. It doesn't matter where you are, you can access School of the Bible. We have lectures, we have group reports, individual book reports, movies, training in all our presentations that we call Five Minutes So Minute, uh, PowerPoint presentations, I mean, you name it, we have it. And we cover a wide range of uh, topics. Our main resources are the Bible 
and the seven manuals. And I'm going to just quickly um, give you a sense of the manual. Volume one contains the overview of the Bible and the first five books of the Bible called the books of Moses, the books of the law, or the Pentateuch. It goes from Genesis to Deuteronomy. Volume two are what we call the books of history from Joshua to Esther. Volume three are the books of poetry from Job, the Song of Solomon. Volume four, books of prophecy, and the books of prophecy are divided into the minor prophets, major prophets. The major prophets are from Isaiah to Daniel, minor prophets, Hosea to Malachi. When you come to the school of the Bible, you will get a further understanding as to why they are called the minor and major. Shifting into the New Testament, volume five are the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the one historical book, the book of Acts. Volume number six are letters of Paul. They are called the Pauline epistles from Romans to Philemon. And volume number seven are the general letters written by a variety of authors from Hebrews to Jude. And then the one book of prophecy in the New Testament, the book of Revelation. Other resource materials are available on request. We, we have them there. If you wish for them, they're not compulsory. You can request them and we'll order them for you. We want to give you a little example of what um, some of the volumes look like. And so we have the cover page for the overview of the Bible, the cover page for the book of Genesis, and the cover page for the comparative study of the Gospel. Call us at 633-3780 for further information. Our brochure will be sent to you with all the information you will need. I'm eagerly looking forward to seeing you in School of the Bible in 2021. This is Pastor Donald Duncan of The Body Church and I'm excited to share with you my brand new book, The Mystery of Time, Understanding the Time and Season You Are In. God has fit time into the continuum of eternity in such a way that it governs the human experience. In this, my seventh book, I look from seven different perspectives at the age-old question, what is time? I provide scriptural best practices for discerning God's timing and share effective tools for understanding the end times. Most importantly, I reveal through the life of Jesus the value of living according to God's schedule and tapping into the wisdom of the Holy Spirit for a revelation of the future. Pick up your copy today. You won't regret it. Available now at Amazon.com. 
What did Jesus say? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. God bless you real good.